Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Michael Barnett, Chief Executive of the Auckland Chamber of Commerce, and it's my pleasure to introduce Prime Minister Right Honourable John Key. Prime Minister, for some time the Chamber has been concerned that we are not moving as quickly as we could and should in taking decisions that need to be made on Auckland's big issues. For businesses to thrive, there is a need for certainty. Unquestionably, the excitement around yesterday's City Rail Link is the signal it sends that government is willing to invest in Auckland. This is not interfering in Auckland affairs. It is acknowledging that Auckland's dominant contribution to New Zealand is critical and must be encouraged and secured. Michael, thanks very much. Can I just acknowledge you and the Auckland Chamber of Commerce and thank you for uh, the sterling work actually you do representing uh, business interests here in Auckland. So I want to talk about some of the issues that are facing Auckland. This city is more than any other in New Zealand, the place that links our country to the rest of the world. My government is very focused on making Auckland a success, not just for Aucklanders, but indeed for all New Zealanders. It's crucial for every New Zealander that Auckland succeeds. Auckland is very important, but it's not separate from the rest of New Zealand. Most of the issues the government deals with involve Auckland and every other region of New Zealand. We are a government for all New Zealand, and Auckland is a third of our country. So it's very hard to break these things down with great accuracy, but we estimate the government is spending around about $24 billion in Auckland this year alone. Auckland needs a cohesive, efficient transport system combining road, rail and other public transport to meet the needs of its growing population and to improve its contribution to the nation's economic growth. The government has been spending more than ever before on building this city's transport network. Currently we are investing around about a billion dollars a year. That includes funding for state highways, local roads, rail and other public transport subsidies. Aucklanders will see the culmination of much of this investment within the next four years. For the first time in the city's history, it will have a fully joined up motorway network and modern new electric trains running on an upgraded electrified rail network. We have already completed the Victoria Park Tunnel and replaced the Newmarket Viaduct. Work is well underway on the Waterview Connection, which is New Zealand's biggest road project ever with a construction build of a touch over 1.4 billion. This will complete the Western Ring Route, providing a continuous motorway route from Manukau to Albany as an alternative to State Highway 1. The Waterview connection will also create a continuous motorway link between the CBD and the airport. The New Zealand Transport Agency has some projects on its books that would address congestion, capitalise on the benefits of the Western Ring Route and improve access to the airport. These include uh, projects to deliver a complete motorway-to-motorway -motorway link between the Upper Har Harbour Highway and the North Northern Motorway at Constellation Drive, upgrade the Gravel Road interchange and improve the Northern Busway. They include widening the Southern Motorway between Manukau and Papakura and to reduce delays on the final State Highway 2080 link to the airport from the North by upgrading it to a motorway standard. Under current funding assumptions, construction of these uh, three projects may be up to 10 years away before they even start. But the government is not prepared to wait that long. So Transport Minister Jerry Brownlee has asked the Transport Agency for advice on how to bring forward the construction and start dates for these projects. And we will be providing additional funding to enable this all to happen. While the projects I mentioned are very important, there are three other major projects that are going to be required as well. These are the next generation of major projects to further develop and improve transport in Auckland for the benefit of the city and the country. The Council's Auckland plan includes an ambitious transport programme which places the highest priority on three projects. These include the combined Auckland-Manukau Eastern Transport Initiative, Amity, 
and the east-west link, the second Waitemata Harbour crossing, and the city rail link. These three projects have a price tag of around about $10 billion, and they are projects that are needed to be planned for over a long period of time. So I want to talk about each of these in turn. The first is the Auckland Manukau Eastern Transport Initiative and East West Link. As you know, the area between Onehunga, Mount Wellington and East Tamaki is home to a number of industrial and logistics businesses that make a critical contribution to the Auckland and national economy. About as many people are employed here as in the CBD and there is considerable potential for more growth. However, the transport links in and out of this area aren't up to the job. There are two major projects proposed in this area. The first is the $1.5 billion Auckland to Manukau Eastern Transport Initiative, Amity. The first phase of this is underway, but the project as a whole will not be complete for another 20 years. The second project is the proposed east-west link between the southern and southwestern motorways. In combination with Amity, the east-west link will improve connections to the state highway network, primarily along the Nielsen Street corridor, and upgrade the links connecting to the eastern suburbs and East Tamaki industrial area. Improvements to public trans uh, transport infrastructure are also likely to be included in the east-west link project. The Transport Agency and Auckland Transport are working together on the initial options for the project. What I can tell you is that resolving the transport problems in this part of Auckland is the government's next major focus for the Auckland Transport Network. Given the economic importance of the area, delivering these projects over uh, 20 years is simply not acceptable. We have therefore asked the Transport Agency to tell us which elements of Amity and the East-West Link can be accelerated with additional funding and how that funding can best be targeted across both projects. The second next generation transport project is another harbour crossing. The Auckland Harbour Bridge is one of the most critical transport links in the country, but forecasts indicate it won't be long before demand exceeds the bridge's capacity. Despite recent strengthening, limits on the weight loading capacity on the clip-ons means that heavy uh, truck access may need to be increasingly managed from around about 2021. Congestion on the bridge is already a problem in peak periods. Traffic forecasts indicate that as Auckland's economy grows, this will increasingly spread across the working day. So a new harbour crossing is likely to be needed between 2025 and 2030. A new harbour crossing will address the issues I've just mentioned and provide for expected growth in Auckland's population and economy. The government agrees with the Auckland Council that the next crossing should be a tunnel. The first step in what will be a very long-term project is therefore to protect the route for the crossing, which we expect will occur before the end of the year, once the details of the preferred alignment have been confirmed. Lastly, we come to the City Rail Link. The Auckland Central Business District is New Zealand's main commercial and financial centre, and as it grows, its important transport links into the city can continue to meet demand. So over the past decade, there has been a massive amount of government and council investment in transport projects to improve access to the CBD. However, it's clear that supporting growth in Auckland CBD will require more resources into the future. Last year, Auckland's Transport um, City Centre Future Access Study concluded that the forecast growth and demand for access to the city centre would best be met with a combination of proposed city rail link and substantial access upgrades for buses. I can tell you that the government broadly agrees with that conclusion. We don't, however, agree with this, the timeframes proposed in the report, which conclude that the city rail link need to be in place by 2021. Given the scale of the project, this would mean effectively starting construction in two years' time. So I've indicated earlier this week that the government is commi committing to a joint business plan for the city rail link with Auckland Council in 2017 and providing our share of the funding for a construction start date of 2020.
we will be prepared to consider an earlier start date if it becomes clear that Auckland CBD employment and rail patronage growth hits thresholds faster than current rates of growth uh, that is suggested. Our current thinking is that an earlier business plan could be triggered if two conditions are met. The first is if Auckland city centre employment increases by 25% over current levels. That is half the increase predicted in the future access study. And the second is that annual rail patronage is on track to hit 20 million trips well before 2020. But these things are matters that we can discuss with the Auckland Council. We will also need to address funding, including how project costs will be shared between the government and the council. Uh, in the meantime, the conclusions of the future access study showed business uh, crowding and congestion coming into the CBD is a priority issue, and we'll look to make funding available uh, in the next government uh, transport policy statement for projects like this to address. So what is clear from what we have announced today is that as well as accelerating the projects uh, and looking for answers to those particular ones of those three crucial projects uh, that are probably next generation, they include about $11 billion worth of expenditure. The government will have to work with Auckland Council uh, but, and uh, with our own officials to work out how we intend to pay for all of these matters but I can say they'll, they're likely to come from a combination of uh, the future investment fund, the proceeds of the mixed ownership model, they'll come from the National Transport uh, Land Transport Fund, they'll come from the government making its own appropriations out of uh, general expenditure, and they may come from doing uh, deals with the private sector in terms of PPPs. All of these can contribute towards uh, the uh, cost of the 11 plus billion dollars. What is clear is Auckland can't wait 20 years for these projects to be started or be completed. If we want to be the home of uh, a growing population where people can have a high quality of life, get about their, their business and enjoy a quality of life, we need an infrastructure that will allow the city to grow and therefore allow New Zealand to grow. This government is very focused on building the infrastructure from ultra-fast broadband to roading to public transport to ensure that will happen and uh, we intend to get on and get the job done. Thanks very much.